Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Maayong adlaw sa inyong tanan. It means good morning to everyone. This is one of the languages that of the people group who are embracing us in their midst right now. Today, as our time with Ashoka ends, I honor them and all the people groups in our country who believed in the vision of Coffee for Peace and made them alive in their own families and communities. Coffee for Peace as a business ceases to be without the communities we are journeying with. This leads me to the first of the four things that I have affirmed, has been affirmed in my journey with Ashoka. First is empathy. In one of the peer circle session, we learned about empathic listening, which reminded me on how Coffee for Peace started. We are peace building workers, working with communities displaced by war in the Philippines. As an income generating project for the people we met, we offered goats. The project was successful in building relationships with the people, but it failed in economic sustainability. In retrospect, the people, the project was a solution from outside that did not take into consideration the context of the people whose short-term needs were more urgent than long-term solution. They were in the middle of war. I noticed that the people groups who were usually at war with each other had one thing in common, and that is coffee. Coffee can be produced all over the country and it is offered in friendship. I realized then that coffee can be an iconic product for peace. And that's how Coffee for Peace started. The inception of Coffee for Peace is a reminder that listening involves the mind, the heart, and the will. When we listen, our mind asks the five W's and one H. The responses goes into our heart where we feel for the people, making us uncomfortable. The will responds to the discomfort by facilitating a solution that invites the people to imagine beyond what is seen and to plan for strategies that they can do in their context. When we shared with them our understanding of peace, hope is also shared with them because peace is beyond the absence of war. Peace is an experience of having relational harmony with the creator, with yourself, with other peace resonates with the people. This is the basic motivation of Coffee for Peace. We want to co-create peace by putting just coffee in every cup. Starting with 20 respected leaders on each 13 communities all across the Philippines, we now work with approximately 880 small farmers that can produce quality coffee using international coffee quality standards. The farmer's income increased by 300%, which in turn impacted their communities positively in terms of food security, housing, educational opportunities for their children and cultural enhancement for indigenous communities. Coffee entrepreneurship has become a concrete manifestation of what peace looks and feels like. However, as a woman entrepreneur who started in life, late in life at age 46 in the Philippines, 
I know that I have to make an exit plan and mentor the younger generation to continue the advocacy. My main question was, how can I pass the baton and trust that the person would not have a drift, a mission drift when the enterprise is earning money? This is my second point, mentorship. Mentorship is why I applied for this program in Ashoka. I involved my team whom I have been mentoring and working with in the business um, canvas model and the theory of change. I believe that their input is important as they will be the one who will take Coffee for Peace to the next level. Since 2012, my husband and I are mentoring younger leaders who believe in the culture of peace and has passion to contribute in addressing social injustices in our society. Among those mentees were three women interns and now part of the leadership of the team. All of them are from indigenous communities. Let me introduce to you Tala from Sumacher tribe or Sumadel, Wanai from Banao tribe, and Sihaya from the Irumanen Menuvo tribe, a Babaylan. Babaylan means healer. All of them have stories to tell. The two ladies are from Cordillera, Tala and Wanai, who have fought their rights to self-determination and still actual oppression. The third one is Sihaya, who grew up and she, who grew up in an environment where war is present. She can easily identify the sound of gunfire and the kind of gun it came from. As a child, she slept with her shoes on and her school bag ready for or just in case they needed to evacuate. She and her playmates preferred hearing guns being fired than being dead quiet because it allows them to track the movement of the soldiers. These three women know how it is to be marginalized as a people group and how it is to be neglected by government. It is from this experience that they are effective leaders. They have been through it. For them, it is a question of, is peace possible? My answer to that is a resounding, yes, peace is possible, but it entails collaboration. Collaboration is my third point. Social entrepreneurship helps in making peace possible, but being a social entrepreneur also means being a community development worker. A social entrepreneur has several stakeholders to take care of. One is the supplier, the employees, the distributor, the investor, and the customer. In CFP's context, we aim that our relationship with these stakeholders are in the framework of peace. Giving attention to all five stakeholders needs a good management skill and collaboration on our part. This is where we seek, see, and seize opportunities that will help us achieve our vision that we are dreaming of. It is important to collaborate because we cannot give solution alone. This was validated when Rico Gonzalez and Shehan Lee shared about fundraising and financing in one of our sessions. Sometimes we do not need to reinvent the wheel, especially if it's not our expertise. Which brings me to my last point, self-mastery. We have to know ourselves. 
what we are good at, where do we lack skill? Why do we do what we, what we do? Is it worth it? Aside from self-assessment, self-mastery also means giving ourselves a break and listening to our bodies. It welcomes cocooning, wherein we experience isolation and seemingly death. It's just like the butterfly who goes into the metamorphosis from being a cocoon to a very beautiful butterfly. One of my mentees shared a picture of cocoon of a monarch butterfly. It has green and gold dots, jade green and gold dots. The cocoon is very beautiful. And my mentee enjoyed looking it, at it so much. Her experience showed that cocooning is beautiful and it blesses the people witnessing it too. I hope that we are comfortable in this stage and know that we are contributing to the world even when we are at rest. This is what I heard from my peer circle, from my peer circle group, Pao, Nelben, Pauline, and Kim. All of us needed a break to strengthen ourselves. And as we take the break, know that it is beautiful. What now is the next step for CFP? Because of the pandemic, CFP has to intentionally focus on an e-commerce solution that will bring buyers and suppliers in one platform. We are working on an FDA approved facility that will serve our farming communities to produce clean, consistent quality coffee to, uh, to distribute to the cafe, offices, and to the hands of the consumer. We are teaching farmers how to use social media and how to answer their agricultural problems via internet. We are contributing to hope, reimagining our realities and actively creating peace in our communities. As the 40 entrepreneurs of the first cohort of women together in a, for a better normal, let us listen with empathy. Mentor young leaders, collaborate with other experts and rest. Thank you for each of you. <laughs>